I have a question which I think is going to give me an insight into what kind of show Voyager is. I'm ready. So at the end of the phage, uh, Kess offers to give a lung to Neelix, and uh, there's mentioned about, you know, at the end, oh, you know, you're going to have to get used to some diminished lung capacity. Now, of course, by the end of the next episode, they're 100% fine. You know, let's say they're space healing fine. Is that ev- is the fact that they each have one lung ever mentioned again? Does it I- ever come into play? Do the two of do the two of them ever have reduced athletic ability or anything as a result of this? There is a season long arc that deals with uh, Kess's desire to become a long distance runner. Okay, so yeah, no, I I honestly don't remember if okay. That's, I mean, you know, it, it's funny. I was thinking about this as I was watching the cloud this week because. I think Star Trek Voyager is is the Star Trek show that I remember the least. Yeah. And I don't, especially, I actually really enjoyed watching these early episodes, surprisingly, because I don't remember liking them very much. But, uh, you know, I honestly don't know. And so I think that details like that yeah. are going to be difficult for me to pull out of my head, primarily because I just don't know them. Okay, because, again, the way that Next Generation did continuity, some what I'm thinking of is how Picard is mentioned to have had an artificial heart and the episodes like Tapestry deal with how he got that. There's the episode where it's failing and they have to so little or or the way that Geordie's eyesight is treated throughout the series and the movies. Yeah. Um when a character TNG handled its continuity by yes, an event would happen and they make that event canon and then maybe they'd revisit that character or revisit the circumstances around then. For some very strong reason, at the end of the phage, I was getting the strong sense we're never. This is not. This is going to be a meaningless sacrifice because of this. I now, of course, that may be unfair to say, but I, I mean, I think that in general, that is true of how Star Trek Voyager tells its stories. It is much more self-contained than Star Trek Deep yeah. Space Nine is, for example. And I, I would even say that it's it's more self-contained than than Star Trek. The next generation. Yeah. Uh, you know, it seems almost more like an original series handling of continuity in which, in other words, a character goes through some kind of accident or trauma or whatever in original series. They're not going to deal with it the next week or ever. Yeah. And I, I, I think that in general, you know, one of the things that you'll see as Star Trek Voyager continues is that the show do, – I mean, like I said, the show does change showrunners – uh, four different times. Yeah. So there's just going to be institutional knowledge that is lost. And when a show goes through so many showrunners, it is going to have sort of an identity crisis every couple yeah. of seasons. So, and I also don't think that it's a big secret that Kess is not on the show for the entire run. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, and I'm not really like, I'm not that invested in spoilers for this show, so okay. it, it doesn't matter too much. Like, I, I know. You knew, you knew Seven of Nine was a character. I mean, she's, uh, I, I knew she's one of the, Big characters. I mean, in, in on the Netflix, uh, t- you know, card for it, it's a picture of Seven of Nine. Yeah, and I know sh- she's a Borg, and I know they get her later on. Yeah, so uh, but I didn't. I guess, is do they? I guess take Kess out, and then Seven of Nine appears to yeah. keep the okay. Yeah, and and we'll talk about that when we get to that in, in a few seasons. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah, I think that's generally correct. And you know, I I don't know. The Phage is an interesting episode because yeah. it's the first episode that really deals with. Neelix and Cass as characters, I think. Yeah. And I, I like the episode. I I wonder if if you if you liked it, if you see any problems with it aside from the lung thing. Well, y- you know, it's it's nice to see these two episodes not be, you know, a weird time warpy plot. It's nice to have kind of a monster of the week plot or a uh I, I like the nature of the uh, of the creature in the cloud, for example. It's, all right, we're in a completely different... Uh, uh, I'm just thinking of Neelix's reaction to it, which is <laughs> entirely un-Star Trek, and I kind of love... Yeah. You know, we're going into... There's a monster <laughs> out there! But, like, you know, we, they are going with, we're in a completely different quadrant of the galaxy. We're going to see some weird shit that we haven't seen before. And, and here are two exa- good examples of weird shit. The phage only sort of care uh, again. The phage only sort of cares about its own plot, uh, especially at the end, because you know the bad guys, you know, repay their the Federation kindness with you know, oh well, we'll be able to fix this, and again, a sacrifice, which turns out in the long run to have no particular meaning to it. It it, it is well, I but, mean- but 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 what I take more from the episode is, for example, the Federation reaction to 
these, you know, the Starfleet reaction to this kind of a situation, uh-huh. the way that these characters are dealing, you know, the way that Neelix and Kess are dealing with Neelix having this sort of problem, the way the Doctor is dealing. Again, you know, you, you said Voyager wasn't as character based, but this is a very th- these are characters hung on to the plot very well. Well, yeah, and I, I think that what you're seeing here is the influence of Michael Pillar. He was the showrunner yeah. in the first two seasons, and you know, we all know about Michael Pillar because we've talked about him a lot, especially if you go back and listen to our Next Generation podcast. You know, he was a very character focused yeah. guy. So yeah, it is true that I mean, Star Trek Voyager does get a reputation later on of not really being very character focused on having a lot of the characters sort of essentially disappear. Yeah. They're still there, but you know, I mean, Chakotay is basically a non-entity in the last like three seasons of the show. Yeah. And it is true that neither of these episodes, the, the conflict does not come from the characters. It's really, they're reacting to an external event. Well, I, I, I think that it is much more of a TNG style story where something happens to them and they're, their reactions are born out of who they are as people. You know, I because I, 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 I don't really agree with you that the the sacrifice at the end where Kess gives up one of her lungs for Neelix is is meaningless because I, I think that the point of that is not, oh, let's have let's talk about them having diminished lung capacity for the rest of the show because no, it's who fair. the fuck it's, cares. It's... But that's not really I mean, that's not gonna give us any good stories. Uh, it, it's more to do with the fact that Cass giving up one of her lungs is the show demonstrating that these two characters care for each yes. other and exactly how much Cass cares for Neelix. Yes. And, That's really what the point of that is. And that she does, you know, she she, she does say, you know, you saved me from the uh, Kazons or whatever, you know, the, this the is, Kazon, yeah. this is kind of returning the favor. Yeah. The, you know, you you would and did do the same for me. Right. Exactly. And I mean, you know, the show also doesn't mention the fact that. The Ocampa only lived for nine years, which is another kind of interesting yeah. wrinkle to it because, you know, Neelix is going to be alive a lot longer than Kess is going yeah, to be yeah. alive. So, you know, it, I don't know if that's something that the show even really thinks about. It doesn't seem that it's really relevant, but it's something that is there, at least to yeah. me. So, yeah, I mean, you know, Phage is – it's another example. I think both of these episodes are examples of Voyager not really, like you said, being interested in the mechanics of its own plot. Yeah. And – I don't know. There, there's something about it that feels very perfunctory to me. Yeah. And not in a bad way, necessarily. I think that what you said last week is really true. Like, this is going to be an entertaining show. It's an action-adventure show. It's very different from Deep Space Nine. It's very different even from The Next Generation at this point. And it's not really interested so far in telling uh, uh, the kinds of stories that TNG or DS9 were telling. I don't know that that's necessarily a problem, though. No, because we did have TNG and DS9. I mean, in some ways, this episode reminds me of, for example, uh, The Quickening, which was, again, about a, a civilization dealing with this disease that you know, kills them and the, the costs and the, the hard decisions they have to make in order to – and yet that was more concerned with the society that, that's dealing with the with the – cruelty of the dominion to inflict this on the society with a society that's lost hope learning how to get hope again this is specifically a we don't really learn much about their society we just learn about these two guys really we don't it's a yeah it's i mean we don't really learn anything about their society yeah we we do the two it's it's very i think the the word for voyager so far is cartoonish yeah it, it's it's sketching it's smaller. out it's yeah it's smaller which is odd because it's taking place in a part of the galaxy that we've never seen before but it's it's very much focused on uh, sketches as opposed to yeah. as opposed to well thought out examples of what these societies would be like. I mean, we don't go to the Vidian planet for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we see two members of their species that tell us their story and say, "Oh, we used to be like artists, and we were wonderful, and we were very beautiful, and all this kind of stuff." But we don't get a sense of really what their society was like. We don't get a sense of the real cost of this. It, it's very much a chase story. It's very much a mystery story. Yeah. And it's not very interested in the Vidians, at, even as people, I don't think. Yeah. Again, we get the little bit about the one who insists that they're an artist society, and he is the one who recognizes the depths of what the Federation is doing. And he is the one who says, well, you know— this just because this is a bad fucked up situation doesn't mean we can't help you know let, let's at least look at your your technology and look at the situation and they they are able to come up up with 
a solution with, with for a solution it. yeah but i i think that you know in but, general yeah. it's not that's not a deep character it's not a deep character and it's also not a deep plot i mean yeah. essentially it's Neelix goes down to this asteroid looking for dilithium. There is no dilithium there because this Vidian is, uh, uh, you know, making false dilithium signals, I guess, to lure people there and then stealing their organs. I mean, you know, it's all very sort of like, okay, there's some body horror stuff in there. Yeah, they can't. It's a Brandon Braga show. Um, They don't really. on one hand, they say, "Oh, we usually go for the dead, you know." But occasionally, th- we there's an emergency. So, all right, maybe you get the sense, right? They just took Neelix as long as because he was going to die. But then, why do they have such a pile of that? It, it well, doesn't. In a way, it almost doesn't matter because I think they're expecting, and to a degree, to a, a real degree, it works. They're expecting the phrase, "Well, there's a, a, a species of aliens that." steal people's organs in order to replace them with his own and they have a beam that can do that they're so advanced that's about as far as the characterization of the vidians yeah. is and i don't even know if they get names yeah and that's about all but that's about all we need to know because it again it is much more about our characters reactions to this how they're dealing with this but but i mean i don't want to get into a situation where we're comparing how this type of story would have been told the next generation for instance because you know i don't think we're going to be doing a lot of comparisons with voyager and deep space nine because they're just very very different shows yes but i i feel as though one of the i mean there's this really interesting idea in the episode where the the one Vidian is the guy who's really sick. I mean, they're both sick, obviously, but one is sicker than the other. And it seems like the one guy is almost his aide or his sort of yeah. herald. And he's the one that's actually looking for other organs for him. Yeah. And there's this whole like, you know, and Deep Space Nine would have taken that or even the next generation would have taken that idea and would have run with it and would have constructed an entire episode around it. Like, that's a really strange setup for a society. What? Yeah. What, what is the purpose of that? How did that develop? What's the morality of this sort of thing? These two but, have an extraordinarily strong an intimate relationship as a result of that this episode doesn't really and this episode kind of tosses that idea off and it does absolutely nothing with it and again i'm not necessarily criticizing the show for having different aims or different ideas or different a different philosophy than the other two star trek shows i mean i think it, it, it has the ideas but it doesn't really want to do anything with them in depth because the show needs to keep moving yeah and very as a very literal literal of the plot I think it's useful to compare the shows in order to figure out exactly what Voyager is right now, since we only have right now four episodes of Voyager and so much more of DS9 and TNG in the original series. Uh, obviously, we're going to be able to talk about the others a little more and what, how, the, how this is different from that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with that. So, well, let, okay, let's talk about... Um, a couple of things that are not present in the episode because uh, first of all, and this is something that's happening in the cloud too. So there's this idea that they're, they're low on energy. Yeah. Right? And so they, they can't really use the, the replicators because they're running low on energy. So they're eating yeah. rations and stuff. Both episodes are spurred on by their l- lack of resources and they need to go on the side quest because all right, we need power that badly. Yeah. Right. In, 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 in phage, they're looking for dilithium, and in the cloud, they're looking for this polaric Omicron energy or whatever particles, the hell it is. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think you're already starting to see how yeah. uninterested I am <laughs> in actually examining the techno babble in Voyager. But there's the the opening scene of this episode. I think is really indicative of the ways in which Voyager is is going to be different from the other shows because Neelix has constructed this kitchen. Uh, there is now a kitchen. <laughs> this is something that stays in the show throughout the show. Oh, good. Uh, Neelix becomes like the cook. And, you know, there's a, there's an element to it which is really interesting to me because I, one of the things that I don't think people talk about enough is the fact that Neelix and to a lesser degree Cass are, are not Starfleet, have yeah. no relation to Starfleet or the Federation whatsoever, have very different goals and aims, see space very differently from these characters. And from and, each other. And from each other. And also... You know, don't know that you're not just supposed to make a kitchen. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Neelix has spent his life, we assume, scavenging, and you know, if, if there's a room and no one's in it and using it at that moment, you know, there's nothing wrong with claiming it and doing what you will with this. And especially from Neelix's view, it's not like he's doing anything selfish, really, by making a kitchen. He's making a kitchen because he recognizes that. G morale is low. Everyone has really bad food. I mean, it, we almost, you know, I laughed in the last, I, 
in I think it was the second episode, where he's like, oh, well, I can cook some stuff together. No, I mean, he's a real cook. He actually knows how to build a very nice looking kitchen from the looks of things. Uh, he's doing something totally out of the niceness of his heart. And I, and yes, it's, it's against the rules and it's, I, I, I mean, I think Voyager is more dealing with when it is appropriate to break certain rules yeah. because outside of it, it's very well and good to, again, have the Starfleet handbook, you know, when you're in Federation space, when there's somebody who's going to catch you, when there's enough people around that if you don't follow this protocol, well, it, you know, things will clash out here in the, in the Delta quadrant where they are the only hundred Starfleet and as she says in the second episode where the we're pretty much the only humans around uh the rules can be different when you don't have when a ship that's big enough where you have all these other rooms you know it's fine to reappropriate a room for the kitchen because we need a kitchen more than the captain needs a private dining room frankly well there's a couple of things that I think are interesting here number one of course is that Neelix does turn the captain's private dining room into a kitchen without permission and that is something that while I think Captain Janeway cares about I don't think a lot of the other characters on the show are necessarily going to care about uh and he does it obviously without asking for permission. He does it out of the goodness of his heart because he wants to help the crew and he wants to provide for them and feel like he is uh, uh, necessary. And yeah. He feels like he is he is contributing. And you know he does it without permission, like I said. But then immediately once he gets called to well, he doesn't get called to the bridge. The captain gets called to the bridge, but he goes and they send him down. You know, they uh, Captain Janeway sends Chakotay and I think Tuvok down or, or Harry Kim. I forget which one it is. Um, are they already the characters are interchangeable? <laughs> um, and then you know Neelix is like, "Well, I'm going too because I've been studying up on this all week, and I've been studying yeah. my away team procedures, and I've been studying how to use the tricorder." And you know, so he realizes that 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 while he uh, he wants to help out, he needs to adopt some sort of knowledge at some point, and he really, I mean, I think both of those things really do demonstrate exactly how much Neelix wants to be useful yeah. for these people. I mean, to go back to the concept of a private dining room too, I'm also, if it's large enough to have a kitchen and have a few people eating there, I don't think it's a dining room as in the place where just Janeway eats her dinner every single night. I mean, she's probably more grabbing something to eat in her ready room or something like that. Maybe the dining room is where when they have somebody, you know, we, we, how how many big fancy dinners have we seen over the course of Next Generation? Or maybe that's where she would gather with her senior officers for a private meal. You get the sense she just hasn't used it at all in the past couple of weeks because yeah. she's dealing with more important stuff, frankly. Yeah, and I think you know not to talk too much about the cloud, but but one of the one of the um, character beats in the cloud is is Janeway's realizing that she she can't be sort of the standoffish captain because yeah. the situation has profoundly changed. And the, for her losing her private dining room in, in, in phage is interesting because it kind of does portray her as a, as a, not standoffish necessarily, but as someone who needs to like protect her privacy or needs to get away. And what I find interesting about it is the USS enterprise to my knowledge, didn't have a private dining room. You know, Picard never used a private yeah. dining room. Uh, and also, look how large her ready room is compared to to Picard's. And, you know, Voyager is a much smaller ship yeah, yeah, than, yeah. than the Enterprise is. So, and, you know, part of that is, I, I read this really interesting article once, which um, was essentially a analysis of the TNG and Voyager sets and, and okay. just how much better uh constructed as sets the voyager sets were because they they learned so much more about how to construct a set where where yeah, they would be able seasons. to put yeah. to put cameras and things like that movement blocking all of those things like if you compare i think i think it's right if you i've never something i've never noticed but if you look at the way the next generation bridge is is shot and the way the voyager set is shot or the bridge is shot it's much more dynamic the blocking is much better the movement is much better there's like a lot of different levels all those kind of things are much better and so yeah the ready room is larger primarily because they got better at building sets yeah and they knew that they needed a larger ready room so the captain could have a different area to go to she can go up on the couches she can be down at her desk you know uh but it's also the kind of thing where it does strike her as a bit more 
one of the, I guess we do have to, to talk a little bit about the cloud because I, I think one of the points of that episode is that the standoffishness goes both ways. Really, I mean, the, when uh, Kim and Paris are sitting down, da- are, are having lunch or something, and you know, Janeway stops by the, by by to chat, and Kim says when she leaves, "Oh, we should have invited her to sit down with us." Like. And Paris is saying, no, she's the captain. We can't do that. It's her job to invite us. She doesn't want to socialize with the ensigns. She doesn't. In in other words, the people who are lower on this figure, well, the captain has so many important things that if I try and be a little too social, that's going to bug her. That's going to annoy her. And she, so, again, that – and she may see that standoffishness and say, well, my the ensigns would feel very awkward being around the captain. I can't really – and they're not going to take me seriously if they – so, yeah, it, it, it's a – I'm glad that they seem to be getting through that very quickly because I – one of the other points of the cloud is that everyone's – you know, the novelty of the situation is wearing off. They've been there, if I think she mentions, five weeks. It's not – you know, they – all right, a- any early miracle is not going to happen. We are settling in for the long haul. And so, again, certain rules, certain niceties, certain protocol drops because yeah. it- it's just going to be bad if they st- if she's if she's an authoritative captain. That's not going to be a nice 75 years. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, I mean, I'm not really ready to move on to the cloud yeah, of yet, course. so we'll just leave that alone for now. But, yeah, I think all that's right. And, you know, for me, what I look at in, the, in Phage uh, essentially is – you know, obviously, this is an episode that is looking at Neelix, is looking at Cass, is looking at their relationship, is also interested, I think, in fleshing out the character of the Doctor yeah. more. And but what I, you know, to kind of pick up on that, and specifically looking at something like, uh, I think it was Time and Again, where the very beginning of the episode, Neelix and Janeway are coming out of her ready room laughing. You know, I think there is an element to which because you mentioned that Janeway is very, I think last week you mentioned that she is very sort of uh, amused, amused by word, Neelix, yeah. and I think that. You know, looking at it in context, looking at the way her character is being developed in these early episodes, I think part of the reason why she she wants yeah. Neelix around, why she's amused by him, and why she talks to him is because he's outside of the chain of command. Yeah. And, and she can be friendly with him in a way that she can't be friendly with some other of the characters. Well, there was – this is reminding me of Lower Decks when the character of the bartender who is both – Friendly, he's the same age as the younger officers, as the ensigns and all of that. He's their peer, but because he's not in Starfleet, he can talk to Will Riker on a friend on a first name basis. He, you know, has friendly chats with Worf, that kind of a thing. He's yeah. at, he's outside of the hierarchy, and therefore he can completely ignore it. He can be on a peer level with Janeway. Yeah, Felix yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I, the other thing I want to talk about, maybe before we wrap um, this episode up or this uh, this section up, is the the doctor in this episode, I yeah. think to some degree in the cloud as well, but but um, specifically in this episode, I think that you know what you're seeing with him is a slow development of his character as uh, someone who is figuring out ways in which he needs to be a better doctor. Yeah. Ways, and I mean, he's obviously very brilliant. He comes up with this holographic lung thing, which yeah. you know whether or not. <laughs> That's actually something that could happen. I mean, you know, <laughs> Voyager does have a reputation for going a little bit overboard with the techno babble. I think it's an interesting solution to a problem. Yeah, if the doctor says this is a solution and it works this way, I have no reason to question him on that. He knows better than I do, so okay, I can accept it. I think is as far as the show want this is a show which I think, interestingly, too much analysis of certain things will poke holes in it. Oh, absolutely. Which yeah. is really fun to be doing an episode by episode of it. But again, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that the doctor is in some ways tr- – he's starting to learn how to transcend his programming, right? He is a- – a- as he says to Kess, I'm an emergency thing. I- I'm just here for – you know, people People just the, – the doctor's occupied that we really just need bodies or whatever. The doctor himself is sick. OK, but then in a week or so, we get another doctor. He doesn't know how to deal with actually being the doctor. So, But the fact that he is able to come up with this very creative solution shows him to be a little more than that, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that, you know, Kess's point at the end of the episode yeah. is, is very profound as well, where, you know, she says essentially, well, you know, doctors learn how to yeah. do this. I mean, they, they don't, you know, I mean, some doctors are just very, very good at bedside manner, yes. very compassionate or whatever. But, 
you know, a lot of doctors have to learn how to do that. And and if he's going to have yeah. to learn how to do it too. Yeah, all doctors need to learn something. That's why they go to med school. And he can sit and complain about it. Or he, and again, going with the five weeks we're settling in, he could sit and complain about it and say, "Oh, it's terrible. I shouldn't be this." You know, no one gives. Or he can just suck it up and figure, "All right, this is the hand I've been dealt. This is the situation. We all need to." pull through together to figure this out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think finally, too, you know, I, I like the fact that this episode doesn't shy away from the frank horror of Neelix's situation. Yeah. You know, he's essentially immobile, can't move, can't do anything. And, you know... Yeah, he's on in, a respirator except awake. Right. And it's like in a... Why don't they sedate him? I don't uh. know. But, you know, in a TNG episode, this would have all been about Neelix's... A problem and it would have just been a lot of neelix because i think back to that, that warf episode, episode like the wharf episode right where he breaks his neck or breaks his back and this is not that show again like it is going to give us those moments but it's also very very interested in keeping the thing moving so that's kind of where i'm already seeing voyager differentiate itself from uh from tng yeah. and ds9 well one thing i th- to think interesting about that is that nobody tells neelix like look i know this sucks We'll sedate you. They'll finish up their mission. Like he's all, oh, I want to die. I want to die. Well, they haven't even figured out if they can bring his lungs, bring his lungs back. Right. And maybe they can. You know, let, let's let them come back empty-handed and say the trail's gone completely cold. We don't even know where to go, and we can't spend any more time there. Like that's another day. Hold off, dude. But, right. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, that that said, yes, you, you would think that they would just put him in stasis or something for the day or two and then wake him up afterwards when it turned out to. But at the same time, that is a little bit of who Neelix is, I think. I don't yeah. know if he is necessarily the person who would patiently wait and try other things. And Because Worf in his episode was willing to try a couple of different things before realizing, no, this sucks to live this way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Neelix doesn't even get to that. And I, I, I think that's not insignificant. No, I don't think so either. And I mean, you know, I keep saying finally, but it's, you know, yeah. who says there's nothing to talk about with Voyager? <laughs> uh, you know, if this actually is a finally that, that you know, Janeway is, this is related to Janeway as well at the end of the episode, because when she does finally catch the Vidians and they tell her yeah. the sad story, you know, she's very frustrated. Yeah. By this. And, and. You know, she. I think that again, Janeway so far is the most interesting character yeah. on the show for me because she's the one, obviously, that has the most screen time. She's the one who's the captain. You know, that that's a lot of what Star Trek is identified by. But she's doing a very good job of you know playing a captain who who has her back up against the wall, really, and and, and has very few options. Yeah. You know, she does say, "Look, I'm very. I feel for you. I'm very frustrated yeah. for you. But you know, I don't have my resources here." I would send you to a Federation yeah. prison and drop you off if I could, but I can't. So I'm just going to have to let you go. And that I think says a yeah. lot about who she is. And for her that, yeah, for her that she, the right thing is so obvious to her, an evil aligned captain, a non-Federation, the mirror universe Federation Janeway, the mirror, the mirror universe Janeway in the situation would say, all right, well, you're cutting your, his lungs out of him or we're going to kill you and then get it out the slow way. You know, we, we were getting those lungs for our person either way. Uh, the fact that she realizes we would have to, we would be doing no better than you are doing. Just don't ever talk to us again. Yeah. Okay, uh, that 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 says who she is, okay, even though the rules are being bent in this part of the galaxy there are still rules. There are still lines. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the cloud. This is a very weird episode. Yeah, it's not. Well, you said, oh, this is going to be a strange episode. It's strange in a way I wasn't expecting. And it's paced oddly, especially this diversion with this bar in Paris that they're going to. And yet it, I don't know. I liked this episode a lot. I'm never sure if this is a good episode yeah. of television or not. I think you're right. It's paced very strangely. It's, you know, this is becoming a cliche already at this point, but it's extremely not interested in the plot. Yeah. There are long sections of the episode which completely forget what's going on. Yeah. You know, there's this whole thing about Chakotay and the medicine bundle and the spirit animals, which, you know, okay. We there's, have... there's the bar. There, I mean, there's just so much weird stuff in this episode. I mean, the bit with the bar, I 
for I was ready for it to be okay. Well, whatever it's going on, it's making them, it's making Kim hallucinate this bar or something like that. Like, it's, but no, it's like no. Paris is literally. It's it's almost a hangout episode. Well, I was about to say it. Really, it, it is a hangout episode in a way, and it's. I think it's kind of refreshing that they didn't yeah. try and connect this stuff to the larger yeah, yeah, yeah. plot in a weird way. You know, it is the. I mean, they they. They set it up very interestingly at the end, at the beginning of the episode where Janeway is having a captain's log and she's saying, okay, we've been out here for several weeks. We're starting to get into some patterns. We're starting to sort of, you know, and yeah, this is real now. (laughs) Right. It's real. This it's setting in that this is what our life is going to be for the next 70 years, possibly 75 years. And what we get is an episode that tells us that is true. I mean, yeah. you know, Janeway is interested in, you know, she's really upset they don't have a counselor on board. You know, for for a weird way, like, I mean, for the for, for the fact that the show has essentially already forgotten that the Maquis thing was a thing. Yeah. Um, which, you know, we can say that's a problem or not. I don't know. I, I, I don't really have an opinion at this point. I don't know if you do, but... Well, I, I guess what I would say is maybe with reality setting in, again, the past five weeks, everyone was still getting used to everything. Everything was moving very quick. But now that it's even moving slow, I, I think everyone's realizing how irrelevant the Maquis division is at this point. They're so far away from the planets where this is happening, from the territory that it's being fought over. And I think everybody is you know, everybody is beginning to admit that by the time we get back, that situation will be long settled And we, either way. Yeah, but I I think that's you reading into the situation more it's, than the show being yeah. interested in that whatsoever. It hasn't even mentioned it, and that's, so that is fair. It, it, it could have could easily be you know Belana Torres and the engineer from the other. You know, it doesn't even matter anymore what where right. we came from. Yeah, they've already become Starfleet people, which yeah. is a little strange. But you know, why do they need the academy if it takes a couple well, weeks? Of, you know, there are, there yeah. are episodes where they'll deal with it later, and we'll talk sure. about that later. Um, yeah, I. I I, again, I'm never sure how I react to this episode. It's 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 very sort of airless in a way. You know, there's not much yeah. for a show that was very focused on moving forward, moving forward, and always telling its story very quickly and sort of you know getting very into this. It's it's just very loose. It's yeah. it's very aimless. But I, it, I, I I kind of admire it for yeah. that. Yeah, I I I think is this a good episode of TV? I think this was a very fascinatingly bad episode of tv because episodes aren't bad usually in this way and so that makes it very interesting because you know sorry tuvok i haven't seen anything like this before uh if 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 we get a spate of these episodes it's not this is something that a little of this will go a long way if we just have random characters having trouble sleeping and taking each other you know hanging out and playing pool for 10 minutes every episode that's gonna be lame but they're to- well they're all they're all acting in very strange yeah. ways. i mean like the the whispering stuff is very strange a lot of whispering in this episode yeah. janeway's whispering to chakotay on the bridge <laughs> chakotay's whispering to janeway on the bridge tuvok is whispering to kim kim is whispering to tuvok you know paris breaks into kim's quarters wakes him up yeah. in the middle of the night to take him to this thing and have a five minute scene where they're at a bar in paris i there's a there's a long scene with chakotay and janeway trying to figure out who her spirit animal is you've got this thing with neelix where he wants to get the fuck off the ship because they're going into the yeah. mouth of a monster i mean it's like and i i it's things like that that do make me appreciate the show because there is a focus on these people as distinct people, at least early yeah. on, where no one ever would describe this cloud as a monster. Yeah. And Neelix does, because Neelix is not an explorer. Neelix is not a scientist. Neelix is essentially a junkyard businessman, what, you know, whatever, a con, whatever you want to call him. He's, he is, a, yeah, he's, he's, not a, he's not what I would call a deep thinker. And not to say he's stupid, but he's just not really. He's more interested in the in the everyday uh, 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 mechanics of of making a living. And for him, this is insane, right? And yeah. I think that that's really it's an it's, interesting thing to do, and it's an interesting perspective. As as you said, you know, no one talks like when he's talking about even the nebula. Why would we go into a nebula? Nebulas are terrible, you know. How how he feels that 
you know, you know, we're in this great ship. Everything, ha- everyone has all they they need, and yet, why are we going any further? Like, why are you doing this? You know, if Neelix found a gr- a great place where everything was perfect, he would, you know, build a wall around it and never leave because that's he's got in everything he wants. He doesn't understand that desire to accept risk because i mean he does to a certain degree i mean he he does study to go on the asteroid yeah. to find the dilithium but that's but again I, that's like well we need it and i think he also i i this is a bit, even though maybe the continuity wasn't that sharp this uh, i could buy the argument that in the phase she says oh well they're gonna go on they're gonna see some dilithium i'll see a really cool cave why not it what else am i doing this afternoon I, I think he thinks it'll be fun and then it turns out to to not be fun. He, <laughs> he gets his lungs stolen from him he almost has to remain in one single position so yes it makes perfect sense that the next week he was be saying no why the fuck would we go in there i'm gonna lose my one remaining lung and and how great is that scene between yeah. Neelix and Janeway, though? I mean, yeah. there are some individual scenes in here that are really good. And, you know, Janeway essentially dressing him down and saying, look, you, we're not yeah. going to let you off. We're not going to let you <laughs> off by the side of the road every time we hit a bump. Like, you're either going to stay on board or you're going to get the fuck out of here, essentially. Yeah. And, you know, for Neelix, I think that he is realizing that, yes, he is not a, he's not on the crew, quote unquote. But uh, him finding out exactly what it means to be living on a Starfleet ship is shocking. Yeah. This is obviously not someone who perhaps has a lot of experience with this sort of thing. Well, I think again, and especially given that he's built an experimental gourmet kitchen in this, I I think he's, he's starting to realize uh, his thing. He's realizing in the five weeks, this is not a luxury liner pleasure cruise. They're not just (laughs) having fun. No, these are an actual military ish organization, which is dealing with dangerous things, which has to resupply itself and has to go into some very risky situations in order to, and which has goals and aims and interests that are entirely different from what, his goals and aims and interests are, you know, it seems to me that Neelix's goals and aims and interests are to get through life and hang out with Cass and Janeway and the whole crew's interest is well to get home, but also they're still explorers and, and they're still interested in seeking out new life and new civilizations. Well, who, yeah, who was it? One of the characters says, Oh, we've given up on going home. We're just scanning everything again now. Uh, uh I don't remember. I, yeah, I think me, I don't know. <laughs> Belana, well, maybe? Either way, the crew is... Which all- makes sense for Belana to yes. say, I will say. I mean, oh, yeah. She, she is not a Starfleet, not Starfleet person. Yeah. But either way, there is this feeling like... Again, realizing how long the haul is, 75 years, I think they... I think some people may be starting to realize that, all right, we have to effectively realize we're never getting home. The best we can do is catalog all of this shit and maybe in a few hundred years another Starfleet vessel will come upon this and at least use our information for... But do you, I mean, do you get the impression they've given up on getting home already? No, I, 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 I mean, I... This is Starfleet, right? They like to run simulations and numbers on everything. So let's put it, best case scenario, we get home in uh, 75 years or quicker. Best case scenario, we find the other caretaker and we're home in a little while. Next best case scenario, it's 75 years and, you know, some of us have had children. Absolute worst case scenario, again, we all die, they find the log. So either way, and either way, we have to do something while we're out there, out here. Yeah, I mean, I think that's true. I mean, look at, I, I, I think Kess's reaction to Neelix when she's saying, oh, it's so beautiful, you know, I, I, again, this is somebody who left the literal safety of her underground home where everything was being provided for her to the outside world where she ran the risk and got captured by a gang of Kazon slavers. Yeah. I think she's, but at the same time, she also met Neelix. She also found herself on this place. She is doing stuff with this hydroponic garden. She's learning to become a doc assistant to the doctor. Right. Like, right. Her risks are paying off for her very well. I would say. Yeah, no, I think so. And, and two, I mean, the the part I mean part of this episode is so weird because it does do check ins with each of the characters. I mean aside really from like Tuvok who doesn't yeah. have a ton to do in this episode and still has not had a ton to do. And I hope you're enjoying Tuvok. Yeah, but, he has that. He he mostly has that 
those couple exchanges with again Harry Kim of I've never seen it before, and then he says, "Oh, I can't make a record." Oh, so that means you haven't seen it before. Uh, again, I think I I I like that Kim is learning to wheedle Tuvok a little bit. I think he's that's him starting to settle in. Yeah, to some degree. I he mean, he's I... both. Sorry, he's both starting to realize the degree to which he's a naive little mama's boy, and. And needs to outgrow that, and the degrees to which no, this is who I am, and I enjoy that. I, I, I don't care if it's embarrassing to wear a night mask. What the hell ever, I get to sleep. I, I'm the one who's sleeping. Yeah, no, that's true. And, and I, you know, it, it is interesting to me because like the 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 actual plot of the episode, of course, is yeah, again, whatever. I mean, I I think we're already seeing a pattern where we're not really going to be talking too much about the plot of the episode because it's not that interesting wouldn't it be cool if there was this gigantic organization organism that they thought was a nebula and they had to it's, deal with it it's all very star trek yeah. it's all very nice they realize they've hurt this thing they go back and fix it and everything's good i mean that's yeah very star trek again go with uh mirror universe janeway well we already ripped a hole in this thing it has the omicron po- particles and i want my fucking coffee uh, this version of janeway that's a very weird analogy by the way i don't know why you keep going back to mirror universe well, janeway. <laughs> no because I, I i i think it's important to i i i am because she doesn't have to do the right thing in this situation right if they just Grab the Omicron and left. Who would know? Who would care? Well, what would it really matter? And yeah, but I, I mean, I, it's still a Star Trek show, and that's, I guess, what I'm saying. It, 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 it's not the deepest theme that Star Trek has ever done, but it is also a new show, and it is also trying to. This show, I get as being a little more be, beginner isn't quite the word, but this is a little more of a casual version of Star Trek than Deep Space Nine. I think this was, is right? advanced Star Trek because you really need to know a lot about Star Trek to to enjoy this show. I think okay to some degree. Huh. I I'm just that's my opinion. Well, I'm thinking about the fact that I know a lot of people who don't really watch other Star Treks but love Voyager. I don't get that. Yeah. But... Again, anecdotally, either way, I think they. I, your first humans are complex and have very different opinions about <laughs> things. It's fascinating. Either way, your first few episodes are the pilot, right? So we yeah. still need to we need to establish over and over that Janeway is the kind of person who, even if it is going to risk their crew a little bit, that she's going to do the right thing because that's what the Federation does. Um, it's why they're in this situation in the first place. They could have easily just rig the ship to go home but no they had to do the right thing by destroying it they could have so so again she i mean they they leave this episode poorer than they were they've spent something like 20 percent of their energy reserves that were already low to fix this creature that again they didn't quite need to fix or or more because it was the morally right thing to do yeah yeah and again i mean it's a star trek show so that's yeah that's what they're going to do you know i i think that you know for me uh, what what really I think is is the nice thing about the cloud essentially is that it's about everybody getting more comfortable with being yeah. on this ship and everybody it it really is going into okay what's what's day to day life going to look like on this ship yeah and what day to day life is going to look like on this ship is Neelix cooking Cass growing some herbs or some fruit or whatever she's yeah. growing being the nurse being the assistant to the doctor. Um, you know, Chakotay is getting more comfortable with Janeway. Janeway is getting more comfortable with Chakotay. He's revealing some things about his belief system, his very vague Native American belief system <laughs> that is not defined in any real way, shape, or form in any sort of real way. Or yeah, no, I, I, like, I know Native American is not a culture. It's it, it, right, and, and this show seems to. I, 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 I was thinking, would it have been better if Chakotay had been uh? I, I mean, I, I guess they're trying to make he, – he was one from perhaps the planet in that one TNG episode that dealt with the Maquis Treaty where they were the Native Americans. I mean he could be from that planet maybe. But no, because none of them had that weird tattoo he has. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like so, 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 and, and I guess that makes it we, – we could say, all right, there's this Earthsats – Native American type civilization on the boundary between Federation and Cardassian space, and it's going to be syncretic because it's you know just like how that weird Scotland planet. Fine, but yeah, this the, the Voyager seems like 
I feel like it thinks it's doing something very progressive and representational by we're going to put a Native American on this show and we're going to show very deep respect for their beliefs. And that can be just another thing that's in the Federation at it, but not realizing again that Native American is not a nationality or an identity itself. It's a category of or, or, or larger set of in, in a weird way this show is very and i'm not using stereo i'm not going to use stereotype in a bad way but it, but it's very uh, uh interested in in stereotypical representations of of yeah a lot of these characters and a lot of these situations i mean i think the 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 scene set in the bar in, in paris or marseille i think it's marseille yeah, yeah. are are a case in point right because that is basically like a, 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 a you know go to disney world and go to the yeah. parisian cafe and that's what you're gonna get i mean it's like you know which is and, where i think some of the original series feel is for me yeah no i i actually agree with that quite a bit i i do think that this show reminds me of the original series more than any of the other star trek shows that we have watched so far yeah because like check for example he was from russia that's about all we know right from, you know when or I, and d- you're her. Did we get a country that she was from? I don't think she so. is from Africa. That's about the, right. And, right. And, and, and again, especially in 1968, that's very progressive. That means a lot. That is a very distinct and different identity. This is the late 90s in which, you know, maybe not as much, but it means well, I guess. Well, it, I think it means well. I mean, I, I, what do you make of the spirit animal stuff? Because... I mean, okay, because, we, we have we have the classic wonderful line that means a lot more when you're a gay man than a straight person. You strike me as a bear. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, I wouldn't kick Chakotay out of bed. But, uh, yeah, it's like... Especially if he has that drug box. Sure. <laughs> I just kind of feel like, you know, it's him getting more comfortable with Janeway. Yeah. Janeway realizing that she needs some help, perhaps. Uh, I don't think it's incidental that she is like really wishing they had a counselor on board, but and I think it's also a little way of getting her in Belana Torres to have a nice another little moment that is because true. you know when she mentions it, you know Torres is the only other one that so Chakotay trusts the two of them, and I I do feel a little awkward about the fact that you know then Harry Kim wanders up and Jane is like let me tell you about my friend's weird spiritual beliefs. <laughs> You should totally do this for him. Oh, my God. Wouldn't that be so much fun when, you know, this isn't like a parlor game. It's not like we're reading our horoscopes in the uh, in newspaper. It's something serious and uh, sacred to uh, Chakotay. And the fact that he's sharing this with Janeway means that he's put her into this. And, but in a way, all of the characters are assuming a further degree of intimacy yeah. with each other than they might have. But... Because I think they're all realizing it's going to be really suck if we don't just, all right, we're here. We might as well be best friends and know everything about each other because it's going to be a very long 75 years if we don't have it all in the open. Yeah, because I, I, I think that if you can identify any single through line for this episode, it's Janeway realizing that she needs to connect yeah. with each of her crew members in a very different way than she would otherwise perhaps be comfortable doing. And I think that each of the little moments in the episode that are sort of disconnected from everything else are about establishing ways in which Janeway is essentially going to do that. And the fact that they bring the bar back at the end is makes that whole bar scene, number one, it makes it worthwhile, but... It is a nice call, but I assume that they won't be checking in at this bar. This is not going to be the new 10 forward or poker room or whatever. But right. the fact that episode four you is... You might be surprised. Really? I don't know. Uh, the fact that episode four is ending with Janeway... Episode five. Episode five? The fact that episode five is ending with Janeway hanging out with the rest of the officers, hustling everyone. In I was pool. about to say, not even hanging out with them. I mean, she is essentially hustling. Them. I yeah, mean, awesome. having having fun, relaxing, letting her hair down. That's something that took Picard the entire. She does not let her hair down. Mm. Uh, she does in that uh, episode when she was going uh, around with her little gun and stealthing around, but. Uh, and that's something that took Picard the entire series to get to. That's where All Good Things ends is with him finally figuring out how to connect with the senior officers as a friend and realizing the importance of that. She only took a couple episodes to get there, and I think that's 
that feels like a progression. To me. Well, I think, yeah, and I think that, you know, maybe this is going to be something that we'll see develop throughout the series. But, you know, essentially, this is a very different uh, scenario yeah. than, than The Next Generation or Deep Space yeah, Nine. Yeah. Because, of course, Deep Space Nine, it, Next Generation was kind of like a city. I mean, they had a lot of people coming and going. They were going to star bases. They had a thousand people yeah. on the ship with families, and they had concerts and science yeah. fairs and all kinds of stuff, right? They had schools and blah, blah, blah. And so. You couldn't really learn everybody's name on the Enterprise. Yeah. There was this idea that the the senior staff were a family, but you know, as we saw in an episode like Lower Decks, for example, they did not feel like they were connected to the senior staff yeah. in any real way. Deep Space Nine again was very much a city, uh, and Voyager is very very self contained. Yeah, they're not going to be having people coming and going all the time. It's a much much smaller ship. It's a much smaller um, crew. And so there is going to be yeah. an intimacy there that is growing just because of the fact that they are essentially their entire universe. Yeah, there's 100, 120 people, and they are the only ones in this quadrant who are in this situation. So they're going to because they're they're, they're going to know every, everyone's going to know each other very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I do like that they uh there is still pickpocketing in the post currency federation, but it's done as kind of a this is what people used to do. Resources were so scarce they stole. <laughs> yeah, it's cute. Yeah. You know, it's little things like that. <laughs> I don't know. It's a nice, adorable little detail. Um I am curious as to how Tom Paris is able to use this replicator when they are apparently scrounging for every Omicron particle that they can get, but what replicator does he use? I'm sorry, hol- holodeck. Oh well, you missed the line in the the oh. uh, early part of the season or series where they said that the uh, uh, very very conveniently the holodeck power systems are incompatible with the rest of the ship. Oh, okay, so that's why because <laughs> they can't use the holodeck power to power the replicators for some reason. I understand. That has to do with plot, of I course. Think. So I, I I I guess it has to do with you know they don't want the existence of the doctor to be a drain on resources. Okay, I did miss that because I'm like, you would think that this would be a very I mean I mean if if Neelix successfully quibbles with Janeway over well you're the captain you're setting an example you can't just be using your replicator rations you know left and right whenever you want a cup of coffee well you can't really make a whole reenactment of a Paris of of a Marseille bar because you just want to hang out like okay that's why i understand and you know huh. it's it's a minor way in which voyager is a little bit bullshit but <laughs> you know it is what it is but that said, I respect that it thought of that bullshit. Well, you're going to enjoy the rest of the show then. Great. <laughs> well, I think that's it for this episode of the podcast. If you have any thoughts on either of the episodes of Star Trek Voyager we just talked about, Phage or The Cloud, please leave a comment on the post for this episode of the podcast at trekaboutshow.com. You can check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash trekaboutshow, where if you like our podcast, you can give us a little bit of financial support. We appreciate each and every one of our patrons. If you give us $5 a month or more, you'll get a patron special, a special episode that is only available to patrons every single month, one a month, 12 a year, 120 a decade, which maybe we'll do. I don't know. We might all be dead. Uh, The one that we just released for April was on Galaxy Quest, which some people have called the best Star Trek movie. What did we think about it? You'll just have to give us $5 a month or more and find out. Social media, we're on at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Trek About Show is our username in all those places. And as always, please leave us an iTunes review for Trek About. It makes us feel good. And it is the best way to get new listeners to listen to our podcast. Is well, that right? I think the best way would probably be a Super Bowl ad, but we can't afford that. If you would like to get us a Super Bowl ad. We also have to wait like 10 more months before we can do that because the Super Bowl happened a couple months ago. But yeah, yeah, but we'll still be doing this next year. We will. Yeah, there's and no, the next year. No doubt. And of the that. next year and the next year we have 75 years to finish this unless we find the caretaker. <laughs> We're actually doing Star Trek Voyager in real time. Wow. All right. Next week we are soldiering on with the first season of Star Trek Voyager. We're going to be talking about the episodes. I have the needle and ex post facto. 